Hey guys, welcome back. So today I have something of a special treat for you guys. As you know, I like bull pups and I like AKs. So what would you say if I could show you a brand new in the box bull pup AK? Check this out, guys. This is a pre-band rifle. Inside this box is one of the more rare AK variants imported from China. And there it is. So this gun is brand new in the box, never been fired. Here's the owner's manual. It is called the Type 86S. It's manufactured by Norinco and or was manufactured. I doubt they're still making them. And here is the gun inside of its wrapper. We're gonna go ahead and take it out for the very first time. Well, actually it's been taken out of this wrapper before. But if you take a look here, it still has the little nut sack hanging from the trigger guard. Keep moisture out of the box. Let's go ahead and take that off. I'll just go ahead and cut it because it is tied. All right, that's off. And there is our 86S. Now this is a very interesting looking rifle. It has a number of parts on it that may look familiar to you. This kind of looks like a French MAS, which is their military service rifle, their bullpup, the carrying handle up here. You'll also notice, actually Jason the cameraman noticed this, this almost looks like a piece off an Uzi's folding stock. It's not, but it has uh, pretty much the same shape. Up inside there, they've actually tucked the cleaning kit and it just kind of clips into place. You'll notice that the charging handle is absent from the bolt, but there is a hole here. Moving forward, we have the charging handle, which is attached directly to the gas piston. All right, that's how you operate the bolt. It will not lock open on the last round fired. Look at this, I have, <laughs> I have all sorts of styrofoam falling out of the action of the gun. Again, it's never been fired. Then in front, this almost looks like a direct copy of a Steyr AUG's vertical forend grip. So it folds, has the same contour as an AUG, and it folds, it pulls down and folds just like the AUG. Cleaning rod underneath the barrel in this rather different looking muzzle device. It has a 14 by one left hand thread up here. The rear sight is adjustable for windage. It's a peep aperture sight. It has a little knob here for left and right. And then your front sight is adjustable for elevation. Inside the box, we'll break this thing down here in a second. Inside the box, we have two 20 round magazines, which are still sealed. They've never been out of their wrapper, so we'll open them up. Here's another one. Two of the little guys. An oil bottle. The Chinese were really good about including the oil bottles. A bayonet. I took this out of its wrapper. Its wrapper is right there. And then a standard Chinese style sling, AK sling. All right, guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to fire this rifle for the very first time. I've always wanted one of these. They're actually kind of hard to find. The fact that I found a brand new one in the box is really appealing to me. Rob Ski over at AK Operators Union told me, don't fire it, it's too collectible. But as I've said before in videos in the past, I won't own a gun, I won't shoot. Check out that safety too, by the way. What a strange safety that is. <laughs> All right, guys, let's load up some magazines and take this little 86S out for a spin. Before we start shooting this rifle and get it all dirty, let's take a look inside the gun. I haven't read the owner's manual and I have never taken it apart before, so let's just wing it. I'm assuming it's just like an AK. Now you'll notice that this stumpy little 20 round magazine that it comes with is short enough to clear the pistol grip when you go to rock it in. 30 round magazines come real close. I can get them in there, but they come real close to the pistol grip. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the magazine out and clear the weapon. I'm gonna pull the charging handle to the rear, make sure the chamber's clear. And then, just like any other AK, I'm gonna push the button here on the rear end, lift up on the top cover and take it off. Inside, there is just a standard old AK. I'm gonna pull the recoil spring out, pull the bolt to the rear. Now I'm assuming I'm gonna to have to take this charging handle out right around here. So I'm gonna pull it back Looks like there's a hole in the top, maybe. Let's see how this is gonna work. Oh, it rotates. See how it rotates to the side? So it's notched, so it rotates to the side, so now you can 
pull the charging handle out. And now you can take the bolt out. The bolt's unique in that it has this bulged area here where the charging handle will sit. That's pretty cool. All right, everything else is just like a standard old AK. Go ahead and take it apart. It has a really interesting blued finish on the bolt, purple. All right, taking gas tube out, I don't even know if that's possible without really taking this thing apart. Looks like it's pretty well locked in there. I'm just gonna go with that's it, that's field stripped. You can see that um, the bolt's been ran a few times. There's no carbon on it. If you take a look at the chamber area up here, that's about as pristine as it gets. Test fired from the factory is about it, I suspect. All right, let's put it back together. Take the bolt in. Set it inside here. I rotate it. Actually, before I do that, I rotate it to the right just a little bit. Take my charging handle, set it down inside there. go. Put the recoil spring back in, put the top cover on. And that's it. It's back together. <laughs> that, my friends, is very interesting. Here we go. We're going to put the first 20 rounds through the Type 86S. Now, I know some of you guys out there are going to get really mad at me. When I took out my SAR-8, the uh, Springfield G3 Greek clone, and it was brand new in the box, and I clipped the tag off the trigger guard and shot it, I got some hate mail from you guys saying, why would you shoot a brand new in the box collectible like that? Well, I have no plans on selling it. It's mine. Why would I buy something that's worth so much money and not actually enjoy it? I don't buy them to look at them. I buy them to shoot them. So here we go, Rob Ski, I apologize my friend ahead of time. I'm not taking your advice. 20 rounds of Wolf hollow point. Lock it in. Believe it's on fire, which is kind of an awkward position. It's back this way. Chambered around. All right, let's see if these sights are on. About 50 yards from those challenge steel targets down there. I will say it has a really odd cheek weld really got to push your face against the, the uh, side of the gun to get a sight picture. Looks like it's just a little high in the left, but it's on steel. And it's grouping. It's grouping really nice. All right. Actually, the recoil is surprisingly light. It shoots really, really well. I wouldn't call that a muzzle break. It does look like it vectors the gases forward a little bit. There's two holes on either side that kind of push the gas forward, which is weird. It's venting forward, which you would think would push the gun back into your shoulder. Typically, muzzle brakes divert gas back this way to pull it away from your shoulder. But um, yeah, that is actually really, really cool. It's very shootable. I like the ergonomics. Aside from the selector lever, I think I can make some adjustments here to the rear sight. Need to come right just a hair. But um, yeah, guys, that is one very, very neat little rifle. You know what? Let's try a Russian Red. Now watch what happens here. When I go to lock this thing in, look how close. I have to rock it at least that far. It's basically touching the pistol grip just to get into the magazine well then I can rock it back. So you're not going to do any speed magazine changes with this thing. But doesn't that look good with a Russian Red? Russian Reds are like bacon. They make everything better. <laughs> All right.
yeah this thing is actually pretty on <laughs> guys I am in love with this this is actually pretty darn cool what a neat little rifle let's cool let it cool off a little bit and uh, load up some more magazines that is one neat gun guys while we wait for the 86s to cool off Let's talk about a Ban era AK. This is a Chinese import AK. This is a BWK-92. This one would have been imported in the early 90s. In 1989, President Bush started the import bans. He started banning rifles from import that had certain features. And then in 1994, President Clinton continued the tradition with the assault weapons ban that sunset in 2004. This rifle would have been caught by the original Bush 41 ban and that's why it has all these weird features. As a matter of fact, they somewhat now call this a featureless rifle. I believe that's California vernacular. Featureless means it does not have a muzzle device. There's no threads out here. There's no slant break. There's no muzzle device whatsoever. You'll notice it also lacks a cleaning rod. It lacks a bayonet lug, and it doesn't have a pistol grip, at least in the eyes of Congress and the gun banners. They don't think this is a pistol grip because it connects to the stock down here on the bottom. They call this a thumb hole stock, but we called it a dumb hole stock. So this rifle in its configuration, its neutered configuration, isn't nearly as troublesome as this rifle, okay? This one's not safe in the eyes of the gun banners for the American consumer. However, this one is. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Yeah, right, hope you can sense the dripping sarcasm there. So this little rifle also shipped with a five round magazine. Now we had a 10 round magazine ban in 1994, but they, the Chinese decided to go ahead and give us a nice, wonderful little five round magazine. Now we'll accept pre-banned magazines, which are up to 30 rounds. Now here's the, here's the uh, rub on these 5.56 AKs. There were pre-banned versions of this gun that had a pistol grip, a bayonet lug, a flash suppressor, and those are collectible items, as are the magazines. The magazines, the original Chinese 5.56 mags, will cost you anywhere between $100 to $200, depending on what you'll pay for it or you're willing to pay for it in an auction on GunBroker. They've gotten ridiculously expensive. Now, there are other, other magazines on the market that will actually work in this gun. You don't need the Chinese magazines, but um, most people want them, which is why they're so expensive. All right, let's have our fun here with our five rounds of Band Magazine. Join us here. go now the sights are on not anyway so that's a neat little gun talk about zero recoil and it's uh, very awkward to say the least that pistol grip or thumb hole stock is goofy but you know this is all we had back in the day thankfully in 2004 the import banned sunset sadly Chinese imports are banned specifically so there will be no more Chinese AKs coming into the US anytime soon probably never again so if you want to buy one jump on gun broker See if you can't find one. As usual, we have two very important points of business to take care of in this video. First of all, I know from reading the comments of all my other videos, you guys are gonna ask, is the 86S compatible with Glock magazines? The answer is, nope, not Glock magazine compatible. Now, if I could go back in time and tell the Chinese that the Glock would become a very popular item in the 90s and 2000s, I would, but sadly I can't. So we're just gonna have to live with the 20 round magazines that the gun shipped with. The next point of business is, how does a gun fire 80s hip style? Well, let's find out. Well, that worked. Makes sense. It's an 80s-ish gun. <laughs> Let's talk about the rather unique ergonomics of this rifle. First of all, the selector lever is just a little bit awkward to say the least. This is the fire position. So if it's on fire and your finger's up, you know, and you can tell it's on fire. And then to put it on safe, I really have to reach up here with my thumb and flip it to the downward position. That blocks the movement of the trigger. So when you wanna fire, you reach up, I curl my finger, flip it to fire and go back down to the trigger. The sights also are different. Originally, I thought this knob was for adjusting windage, and it's not. The owner's manual doesn't tell you how to adjust the sights on the gun. 
So just playing around with it, I realized this adjusts the elevation. So it has little elevation markers around it in meters. So you'll turn it to the corresponding one, two, three, or four hundred meters. The front sight is much like a standard AK front sight. So it has a drum here that you can drift left and right. And then the front post down inside there that you can adjust for elevation by screwing it up or down. So you would zero your gun with the front sight and then adjust for elevation in a combat situation, which I would not take this rifle into a fight if I could avoid it uh, by adjusting the rear drum here. The ergonomics otherwise feel a lot like a Steyrog because this grip is just like the Steyrog. Your two hands are really close together, but it gives you pretty good control of the gun. Sighting down the rifle's sights um, is interesting to say the least. It pretty much obscures the entire target area because you have this big massive hump of steel and then you have an aperture peep sight right in the middle of it all. So you can't really see what's going on around you. You can see a little bit above the target but nothing left or right of it. I think I got it zeroed though. Got a little bit of oil getting in my sights there. So let's take a look at the 86S next to a Type 86, and this is a spiker. You can see that in the length department, it's considerably shorter. The length of pull, however, is considerably longer. You'll notice where the pistol grip is here on the standard AK. Look how much far further forward, I should say, the pistol grip is on the bullpup. So there you go, side by side with a standard full-size fixed stocked AK. Now let's take a look at it next to an underfolder Bulgarian. Now look at that. The underfolder with its stock folded is only a little bit shorter. Actually, they're pretty much the same length, a fraction of an inch if there's a difference at all. So this bullpup is about the same size as an underfolder AK with its stock folded. That's a pretty small little package. I hope you guys enjoyed coming out to the range with me to shoot my Type 86S for the very first time. These bull pups are rare. Now, some people say as many as 2,000 of these guns made it into the country. I don't know how many made it in. All I can say is I've never seen one in person before. I didn't see one or shoot one until I actually bought one. If you're looking to buy something like this, you're looking at spending at least $3,000. Um, that's about what they're gonna go for used. I was fortunate enough to find this one new in the box. So they're highly collectible and very hard to find. If you want one, you can get on Guns America, Gun Broker, AR15.com in the classified section. You're just gonna have to surf and try to find something like this. Again, expensive and very rare. I know some of you guys are gonna get mad at me for shooting this thing, but I have no intention of selling it. And like I said before, I'm not gonna buy a gun that I won't shoot. If you guys have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, ask those questions down below. I try to stick around for the first couple of days after a video goes live to answer the questions you guys may have. Also, if you would like to support the Military Arms Channel, the best possible way is to swing by and check us out at Copper Custom. Again, that's Copper Custom. And if you haven't already, please check out Full30.com. That's Full30.com. We've taken all the web's best firearm contents creators and brought them under one roof, and that is Full30.com. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Sucker's hot. Won't be able to put it in a bag for a while.